Hello everyone, my name is uh, Miloš Jevkovic and I'm the story writer at Zero Gravity Studios. Today we want to show you an extended version of our early gameplay footage with some added commentary to explain some of the game's features. Keep in mind this is early pre-alpha gameplay as the game is still heavily in development. The players wake up in their cryopods inside the ship's cryobay. This is basically how the game starts. You find yourself inside a cryopod, either an outpost or in a ship and you need to find a way to survive. So here we see the crew splitting up into two teams. One team is going over to the bridge while the other team prepares to leave the ship for exploration. As the players enter the bridge, you can see a small outpost on the left and a huge gas giant planet we call Petir on the right. Now the captain is going to take command of the ship by sitting in a pilot's chair and what he's basically going to do is move the ship a little bit closer to the outpost in order to make the EVA trip a little bit easier for the other team. Now, both the station and the ship are in orbit around the planet in a solar system of one-third of real scale, so the gas giant is around 50,000 kilometers across. Now, since the distance between the ship and the station is relatively small, the captain can pilot manually without any problems. However, if the distance were any larger, he would need assistance from the ship's nav computer to match the orbital velocity, as both the ship and the station are moving at extreme speeds around the planet. Now in the meanwhile, the other team is preparing to leave the ship and enter the hard vacuum of space. Therefore, they are putting on their pressurized suits, helmets, and taking with them their jetpacks, so they can maneuver a little bit easier in zero gravity environment. The pressurized suits the players have on are not really designed for prolonged exposure to the vacuum and radiation of space. They come with their own oxygen supply, but the jetpacks have a very limited fuel supply. That is one of the reasons why the captain moved the ship that close to the station, to minimize the risk to his crew. In order to leave the ship, the players need to approach the airlock, then cycle the air, and finally go outside. Now as you can see, one of them just entered zero gravity. The ship has artificial gravity generators, but the airlock and several other corridors are in constant zero G. This is mainly to make transitioning between environments easier. The ship's controls allow for manual gravity adjustment throughout the entire ship or just for specific rooms. Gravity can also fail as a result of a malfunction which would basically put everything in a weightless state. Now, one of the players is about to initiate air cycling within the airlock. Now, as that lever is pulled, you can see how the pressure bar begins dropping. The ship's life support system is pumping the air out of the room in order to equalize the pressure with the outside. Without doing so, the decompression would throw both players outside uncontrollably. Not only would they need to expand fuel to stabilize, they would also waste some of the ship's precious atmosphere, a very valuable commodity in space. Now, with all preparations complete, they leave the safety of their ship. So, this is another big feature of the game, the seamless transitions. As you can see, the player simply moved from the airlock to the outside. This is also true for all objects within the game. There are no loading screens in this game. You can move freely from the ship to the outside, into the station, without any restrictions. Now as the players are approaching the station, you can see that the outpost has an airlock very similar to the one found on their ship. This is what is usually used as a docking port, but since the outpost seems to be running on emergency power, docking the ship with it might not be possible. So the two of them split. One is going to stay outside and search for a way to restore power to the station, while the other one moves inside and tries to see if the life support system was still running on emergency power. Because if it was, it would mean that the station still has some breathable air left that they can use instead of their own suit supply. So it would seem that the life support system on the station is still running and the air is being pumped back into the airlock. But without restoring the power, it might not be possible to move further. It seems that the player on the outside has found a way to deploy the station's solar panels, restoring power to the station. Now, this is one of the features of the game. Most problems will not always be obvious. Sometimes you will actually have to search for a way to repair a ship or a station before you can explore. With power systems restored, the station springs back to life. The players can now move further into the station in search of valuable equipment and resources they can salvage. All the while, the captain is carefully watching his team from inside the ship, keeping a close eye on all of their actions. However, once both players are in the station, 
he will no longer be able to track their actions. And in certain cases, even radio communication may be impossible. Now inside the station, both players move forward. With power restored, the doors will let them in. One of them moves into the room and immediately spots a rifle. And not only that, there is also armor and ammunition within the station. As you can see, the station's interior was designed specifically for zero gravity, and the station itself is very well preserved. This is a rare exception, as in most cases, players will have to move through ruined outposts and derelict ships. For now, both players seem content with just the weapons they found, and they move back towards their ship. Here we are going to fast forward a little bit, skipping the entire air cycling routine. As both players leave the station and go back to their ship, we have fast forwarded the time a little to show you another example of the game's mechanics. As you can see, the ship is now only visible as a silhouette. This is because the sun has set behind the planet, leaving them in complete darkness. As both players had turned on their flashlights, they can see other players moving on the bridge. The captain is also watching his team return from their mission, eager to find what loot they've salvaged. We'll use this opportunity to show you ship's outer hull a little bit. This is one of our medium-sized vessels, and the game will feature ships both larger and smaller than this one. And here you can see orbital mechanics at work. As the sun slowly rises from the horizon and illuminates both the ship and the players on the outside. It gives us the opportunity to show you the ship in greater detail, as you can see when the players turn around. This ship is very robust. It's an industrial excavator designed for heavy mining and salvage operations in deep space, and it actually requires a crew of several people to run at full efficiency. Now, we did mention that it's a medium-sized vessel, but it can still serve as a mobile base or a home for several players. So, the players are finally returning from their exploration mission, and once more, we're just going to skip to the entire airlock cycling routine. The players are now back in full gravity, but it does seem that something is amiss as they don't look ready to surrender their salvage just yet. And judging by their actions, it looks like they're planning a takeover. Here they kill one of the former crew members on his birthday, and it looks like Captain Dimbe is about to be relieved from duty. This is another important feature, there are no artificial limitations for player interaction because in the world of Hellion, you live or die according to your choices.